okay, okay, we're not in the Alps. And if you're expecting a wistful introduction about sunrise and cool mountain air, well, I'm sorry. But today is all about my 911, and its story starts right here in sunny Bedfordshire. Don't worry, we will get to some beautiful roads in a minute, but this unlikely setting is significant for me because it was the location of my own road to Damascus moment. I'd been a motoring journalist for about two weeks and had a healthy scepticism when it came to Porsche 911s. Then I dropped into the passenger seat of one for a short hop from Bedford Autodrome circuit back to Evo Magazine's office and it's fair to say that everything changed. The car in question was a painfully plain 996 Carrera in polar silver wearing 17 inch alloy wheels. It was involved in a group test against a brilliantly over the top R34 GTR, a gorgeous TBR Tuscan, the then new E46 M3 and this big swollen arched Audi RS4. It had the least power, it looked so meek, and I assumed it was the natural contender for the wooden spoon. But that thought lasted between, I reckon, two and three seconds. And over the next few minutes, my barely contained contempt for this car became awe, followed quickly by love. From that moment on, on this road, I was basically a 911 guy, and I knew that one day I would have to have one. Of course, ideally, it would be a GT3, a pucker Metzger engine monster. But I couldn't afford one, and when this car turned up in the classifieds back in May 2013, I just couldn't resist. It's an early 996, a 98 with a limited slip differential, and it had already been tweaked by previous owners. GT3 style seats were a good start, adjustable Bilstein PSS9 dampers even better, and it had been subject to a precautionary engine rebuild and treated to a full car graphic exhaust system. Aesthetically, it was a mess. Stone chipped, crack splitter, obvious evidence of some seriously hard miles. But the guy I bought it from owned a race shop that ran 90s F1 cars, and it was comforting to think that it would be able to take anything I could throw at it. This was a 911 I wanted to enjoy to the full. Since then, it's been resprayed. I bought the lovely and super lightweight OZ wheels, fitted RSS semi solid engine mounts for extra control, and I've had the suspension fully rebuilt, fitted Powerflex poly bushes and adjustable rear arms so that I can run GT3 heights and cambers, and I'm sure it will evolve further still. Now, I may have seen the light that day in Bedfordshire, but it was here in North Wales where I really started to understand. This is where I drove thousands of miles in dozens of different 996s. These roads shaped the spec of the car I ended up with and continue to pull me back here regularly to remember just why I bought it. So what is so special about the 996? Well, if you listen to some people, nothing much at all. This is the bad 911, the unreliable 911, the ugly 911 but I've never really understood how it came to be left out in the cold. Okay, so it had to mark the transition from air-cooled to water-cooled, and to a certain extent, also reinvent that classic 911 shape. But it's lighter than the 993, it replaced faster in every way. And although it marked a new chapter, it kept so much that's special about the 911 driving experience. The compact dimensions, the amazing visibility, the delicious steering feel, and most of all, most crucially, that absolutely intrinsic rear engine feel, which is what defines a 911, basically. Of course, you might think this car looks absolutely hideous, and that's all right. That's sort of what a drive tribe's all about, isn't it? There's different things for different people. But I didn't buy this car in order to admire it from afar or polish it or all those other things. For me, it's about the driving experience, pure and simple. And in that respect, this car still hits the spot. First thing you notice is that the 996 feels tiny. Okay, not 1970s 911 tiny, but compared to anything else, it feels so narrow and small and light. The steering's fantastic. It's so evocative of those old cars. But it's cleaner and lighter and it just reflects the slim down feel and the fast reactions of this car. Manual box, again, is different. Not like a 993 and 964, it hasn't got a sort of pendulous shift. 
but considering it's quite a long thread, it's very light, it just works so well. Okay, the much maligned M96 motor. Well, it isn't a Metzger engine, okay, but... The noise, the response, still a fantastic engine, I think. Most of all, it's a huge part of the involvement that you feel in this car, and that's crucial, really. Every little element involves you in the process of driving, of how this thing gets down the road. And I guess, to me, that is the definition of a driver's car, basically. Now, I'm not going to pretend this car is some sort of widow-maker. It isn't that. It isn't some scary old 911. But you have to use technique and thought to get the best from it, and that's great. You enter into some sort of... God, this sounds cheesy. You enter into some sort of relationship with the car, which sounds absurd, but it's true. You have to learn to drive to its strengths drive around its weaknesses, just unlock what the car can do. I, I love that about it. In this car, it's about using the weight in the back just to adjust the car so it doesn't understeer on the way into the corner and then bang, leaning on that amazing 911 traction that you've got. I'm not talking about sliding the car so much, just feeling the car's weight shift around and feeling like you have a huge part to play in that process. It's a it's a 911 thing. Of course, you might just say I'm massively biased, and <laughs> maybe I am, but that's not the entire story. The big story about this car is that it's just a really satisfying, rewarding car to drive. And in a world of 50 grand 993s and 964s, it offers and represents unbelievable value for money. I mean, unbelievable value for money. So I would say if you're on the edge of 996 ownership, forget all the haters and go and do it because it's a fantastic driving experience. It's a fantastic 911 driving experience and you'll love it. And it doesn't really matter what anyone else says. As long as you love it, what else do you want? Maybe you do want more. A GT3 RS, a 3.8 litre Metzger, ceramic brakes and all that good stuff. And I don't blame you for that at all. But would I be having more fun in a car worth 10 times as much as this? Well, I guess so, but that's hardly the point. One thing I do know, though, is that 10 or 20 years from now, I'll still be heading to these roads in this car, and it will still deliver every single time.